Greetings, it's Sue with today's Bible reading for January 29th, and today I'm reading Exodus 33 to 35 from the World English Bible. Two more readings after this one. So this is the third from the last for this book. And on that note, you can find a playlist of past, uh, well, the past readings. There are, there are multiple playlists. There's one with all of them for the whole year called Today's Bible Reading, W-E-B, for World English Bible. But there are also playlists that are broken up by book. So, for instance, I like to go back after we finish and just listen through the whole playlist of the whole book. Uh, just to kind of re-review it after. Re-review it? Is that a word? Anyway, after I finish reading, I like to go through it. So those are there. If you ever want to take advantage of those or if you miss, you know, miss a day and you want to catch up. Like I said yesterday, don't feel like you have to catch up. If you miss, you'll make it a burden and you'll probably stop doing it because if you know if you don't enjoy it you're not going to continue on with the habit and it's so worth it so let me get started here chapter 33 verse 1 Yahweh spoke to Moses depart go up from here you and the people that you have brought out of the land of Egypt to the land of which I swore to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob saying I will give it to your offspring I will send an angel before you and I will drive out the Canaanite the Amorite the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite Go to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go up among you, for you are a stiff-necked people, lest I consume you on the way. So did he say, I'm going to drive them out before you, but I won't be with you. So I'll be before you, not with you. Interesting. And that's following up on yesterday's tragedy that happened, or drama, I should say, that happened, which you'll remember if you were with us yesterday. They got in trouble with God. Um, disobedience. So it says, when the people heard this evil news, they mounted and no one put on his jewelry. Yahweh had said to Moses, tell the children of Israel, you are stiff-necked people. If I were to go up among you for one moment, I would consume you. Therefore now take off your jewelry from you that I may know what to do to you. The children of Israel stripped themselves of their jewelry from, the, from Mount Horeb onward. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far away from the camp, and he called it the tent of the meeting. Everyone who sought Yahweh went out to the tent of the meeting, which was outside the camp. When Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose up and stood, everyone at their tent door, and watched Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered into the tent, the pillar of cloud descended, stood at the door of the tent, and Yahweh spoke with Moses. Wow. All the people saw the pillar of cloud stand at the door of the tent, and all the people rose up and worshipped, everyone at their tent door. Yahweh spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. He turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, didn't depart from the tent. Moses said to Yahweh, Behold, um, behold, you tell me, bring up this people, and you haven't let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me your way, now that I may know you. <clears throat> Wait, please show me your way now that I may know you so that I may find favor in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. He said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Moses said to him, if your presence doesn't go with me, don't carry us up from here. For how would people know that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Isn't it that you go with us so that we were, are separated and your people from all the people who are on the surface of the earth? Yahweh said to Moses, I will do this thing also that you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. I love that God put in there. Moses didn't ask for rest here. God said, and I will give you rest, like knowing that Moses is just put out. He's, you know, if, if, you, if you've been following along and you see the trials that Moses has been to. Um, wow. So God is, you know, Moses has been being stretched. He's been being tested. He's been working hard. Um, so he's just having this conversation with the Lord. Exactly the pattern we should do, right? We go to the Lord and we work it out with him and we get refreshed and we find rest and we find new determination and new, new outlook. So Moses said, if your presence doesn't go with me, don't carry us up from here. I read that already. Verse 17, Yahweh said to Moses, I will do this thing also that you have spoken for you have found favor in my sight and I know you by name. I read that also. 18, Moses said, please show me your glory. 19, he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim Yahweh's name before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. 
He said, you cannot see my face, for man may not see me and live. Yahweh also said, behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. It will happen while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand and you will see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Yahweh said to Moses, chisel two stone tablets like the first. I will write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke. Be ready by the morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. No one shall come up with you or be seen anywhere on the mountain. Do not let the flocks or herds graze in front of that mountain. He chiseled two, sta two tablets of stone like the first. Then Moses rose up early in the morning and went up to Mount Sinai as Yahweh had commanded him and took in his hand two stone tablets. Yahweh descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed Yahweh's name. Yahweh passed by before him and proclaimed, Yahweh, Yahweh, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness and truth, keeping loving kindness for thousands, forgiving iniquity and disobedience and sin, who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and on the children's children on the third and fourth generation. Moses hurried and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. He said, If now I have found favor in your sight, Lord, please let the Lord go among us, even though this is a stiff-necked people. Pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. He said, Behold, I make a covenant before all your people. I will do marvels, such have not been worked in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among whom you are, you are shall see the work of Yahweh, for it is an awesome thing that I do with you. And if you understand that this is the story from the beginning of the Bible to the end, from the beginning of time until right now where we live, that this, when he says, it's an awesome thing that I do with you, that is the thing that he has been doing from the beginning, from, the, from Adam and Eve until now, creating this, this line of people through which to bring the Messiah. So that's why it says, um, for it is an awesome thing that I do with you. Observe that which I command you today. Behold, I will drive out before you the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Parasite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Now, I believe those were giants, and they were a wicked, irredeemable race. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I believe. This wasn't just a bunch of other people and races that God decided to just indiscriminately kill off. <clears throat> be careful, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you're going, lest it be for a snare among you, that you shall break down their altars and dash in pieces their pillars, and you shall cut down their Asherah poles. For you shall worship no other God, for Yahweh, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. I talked about jealousy yesterday. Um, the jealousy of God. Verse 15. Don't make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, lest they play the prostitutes after their gods and sacrifice to their gods, and one call you, and you eat of his sacrifice. And you take of their daughters to your sons, and their daughters play the prostitute after their gods, and make your sons play the prostitute after their gods. So see, some of these principles that I bring up, remember I said this is not a Bible study, it's just a reading, but I try to point out certain principles and certain aspects of the Bible to help new Bible readers and to um, to help us remember, kind of like, you know, get it past our long, uh, short-term memory. And as I always say, to gather those little puzzle pieces so our understanding of the Bible just keeps growing. So when I say things like um, this topic of God, a jealous God, it says, actually, his name is Jealous, a jealous God. Well, there's a great place for you to take a note and do your own study on it. Heck, write a book, write a, write an ebook and put it on Amazon, right? You know, take it and run with it. You could, you could just make a whole topic, a whole nugget out of that one concept right there. Verse 15, don't make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, lest they play the prostitute after their gods and sacrifice to their gods. And one call you and eat of his sacrifice. And you take of their daughters to your sons and their daughters play the prostitute after their gods and make your sons play the prostitute after their gods. You shall make no cast idols for yourselves. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread as I commanded you at the time appointed in the month of Abib, which by the way is around April. It's, this is A-V-I-V. It's also spelled A-V-I-V. For in the month of Abib, you came out of Egypt. So that's the Passover time of the year on the Hebrew calendar. Verse 19. All that opens the womb is mine, and all your livestock that is male, the firstborn of cow and sheep. You shall redeem the firstborn of a donkey with a lamb. If you will not redeem it, then you shall break its neck. You shall redeem all the firstborn of your sons. No one shall appear before me empty. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. In plowing time and in harvest you shall rest. You shall observe the feast of weeks with the first fruits of wheat harvest. 
and the feast of harvest at the year's end. Three times in the year all your male shall appear before the Lord Yahweh, the God of Israel. For I will drive out nations before you and enlarge your borders. Neither shall any man desire your land when you go up to appear before Yahweh, your God, three times in the year. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread. The sacrifice of the feast of the Passover shall not be left to the morning. You shall bring the first of the first fruits of your ground to the house of Yahweh your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Yahweh said to Moses, Write these words, for in accordance with these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. He was there with Yahweh forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. He wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mountain, excuse me, Moses didn't know that the skin of his face shone by reason of his speaking with him. When Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. See, this is the radiating glory of God. You might have heard me talk about working in a nuclear power field with radiation um, for 10 years as a radiation protection technician. And um, so I correlate the, what I've learned about the nuclear radiation with this radiating glory of God, this light. You know, radiation, um, the nuclear, well, we don't, we don't, how do I make it simple and short? Um, radiation can be light and it can be particles. So here, you, you know, and the Bible says God is light. So here's some form, whatever the purest form of light, I don't know how to describe it. I don't want to make it sound weird, but this radiation that, that God said, don't let them get too close or they'll die. You know, this intense dose of glory that Moses was in to the point that it's, it's it, he's contaminated now. It's shining. And he has a residual on himself. His spirit is lit up to the point you, they could actually see it with their eyes. Um, so it says they were afraid to come near him. Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke to them. Afterward, all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them all the commandments that Yahweh had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses was done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before Yahweh to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out, and he came out and spoke to the children of Israel that which he was commanded. The children of Israel saw Moses' face, that the skin of Moses' face shone. So Moses put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with them, with him. Moses assembled all the congregation of the children of Israel and said to them, these are the words which Yahweh has commanded that you should do them. Six days shall be, uh, sorry, six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be a holy day for you, a Sabbath of solemn rest to Yahweh. Whoever does any work in it shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations on the Sabbath day. Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which Yahweh commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering to Yahweh. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as Yahweh's offering, gold, silver, bronze, purple, blue, scarlet, fine linen, goat's hair, ram skins, dyed red, sea cows, hides, acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the sweet incense, onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. Let every wise-hearted man among you come. And make all that Yahweh has commanded. The tabernacle, its outer covering, its roof, its clasps, its boards, its bars, its pillars, its sockets, the ark and its poles, the mercy seat, the veil of the screen, the table with its poles and all its vessels, and the showbread. The lampstand also for the light, and with its vessels, its lamps, and the oil for the light, and the altar of incense with its poles, the anointing oil, the sweet incense, the screen for the door, at the door of the tabernacle. Excuse me. The altar of burnt offering with its grating of bronze, its poles, and all its vessels, the basin and its base. The hangings of the court, its pillars, their sockets, and the screen for the gate of the court. This is one long, one long run-on sentence here. It keeps going. The pins of the tabernacle, the pins of the court, and their cords. The finely worked garments for ministering in the holy place. The holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office. All the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. They came, everyone whose heart stirred him, and everyone whom his spirit made willing, and brought Yahweh's offering for the work of the tent of the meeting, and for all of its service, and for the holy garments. They came, both men and women, as many as were willing-hearted, and brought brooches, or brooches, earrings, signet rings, and armlets, all jewels of gold, and even every man who offered an offering of gold to Yahweh. 
Everyone with whom was found blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat's hair, rams, skins dyed red, and sea cowhides brought them. Everyone who offered an offering of silver and bronze brought Yahweh's offering, and everyone with whom was found acacia wood for any work of the service brought it. All the women who were wise-hearted spun with their hands and brought that which they had spun, the blue, the purple, the scarlet, and fine linen. So I'm picturing, you know, this, this wilderness area. I assume it's the plain down below the mountain. It's pretty dry out there. I guess it was that way then. You know, you've seen pictures of Arizona. <laughs> Areas in the Middle East are like that. But I picture them all in their tents and all spread out, and they're they're busy. They're on a mission now. They're all busy. The women are spinning and, you know, they're collecting things and going about their normal daily routines. But they're all about this purpose of obeying God and getting the tabernacle together. So, um, and it doesn't say it yet. We'll see if it does later. But there are others. I've talked about this before, if you've been following me for a while. But there's multiple places where you see whenever they, the people start obeying God, realigning their life with him and what he has them do, there comes hope and great joy. Multiple places you see this. You see this when they were rebuilding the temple. And so that's one of my little collections of puzzle pieces there is about this great joy. Um, somebody should write an ebook about that. Maybe I will someday, but take it. Go look it up, do a study on it, put it out on the internet. Um, so I imagine the same thing's happening here. They have all gotten busy now. They're unified around a purpose, and it has to do with obeying God. And there comes this joy, this hope, you know, hope that God's taking care of us. We're moving forward. We've got something ahead of us to look forward to. They know they're going to come into the land. Um, they have a choice whether to trust God or not now, because they know that land's filled with giants. All right, so it says, um, all the women whose hearts stirred them in wisdom spun goat's hair. The rulers brought the onyx stones and the stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate, with the spice and the oil for the light, for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a free will offering to Yahweh, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all the work which Yahweh had commanded to be made by Moses. So even the children are involved. Moses said to the children of Israel, Behold, Yahweh has called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, the tribe of Judah. He has filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and in knowledge. And in all kinds of workmanship and to make skillful works to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting of stone for setting and in carving of wood, to work in all kinds of skillful workmanship. He has put in his heart that he may teach both he and Aholiab, the son of Ahizamach, the tribe of Jan, Dan. He has filled them with the wisdom of heart to work all kinds of workmanship, of the engraver, of the skillful workman, and of the embroiderer, in blue, in purple, in scarlet, and in fine linen, and of the weaver, even of those who do any workmanship, and of those who made skillful works. That's the end for today, but I just love, love, love that part that it says that God gave them a spirit to do the work that they were doing. That gave, He gave them knowledge, understanding, and wisdom to do what he had called them to do. So they had the wealth transfer out of Egypt where they got all the goods that they needed to bring about this temple. And now he's giving them the insight, the knowledge, the skill, the ability, the motivation even to do what they're, what they have to do to get this tabernacle set up. Praise God. That's wonderful. All right. Well, thanks until next time. Peace.